PlayStation Portable. You have no idea how cool it is to have a handheld Sony device again in 2023. Throw me back to PlayStation Vita, baby. I'm ready. I've been really excited for this. We've had so many handhelds released recently. We just looked at the Steam Deck OLED. I'm still messing around with the Lenovo Go. In other words, the Nintendo Switch Pro. And now we got this bad boy. Arguably, questionably, least useful of any of those handhelds I just referenced. Because this, if you don't know, is PlayStation's dedicated handheld streaming game device. And not just streaming games from the cloud or something like xCloud or from PlayStation Now or something like Game Pass. No, just directly from your console. You need to have your PlayStation 5 on, connected to the internet, and playing the games and stream that to the screen in your hands. A lot of people debated if this was even useful at that point. What is the point of having something like that? For me, I think it's cool that I can sit there and play my PlayStation games portably. It would be cool to play them in bed at night where I don't have my PlayStation 5 with me. Or even if Kim wanted to watch TV and I wanted to play games, now we can free up the TV space. I do see uses here, but my biggest concern this whole time has been how it's going to work. My experience with streaming PlayStation games through a tablet device or a phone or any kind of Android has not been good. Very laggy, very bit crushed, and just not a pleasant experience. Let's hope this is good, or at least better than that. Let's see. Another thing a lot of people didn't like about this when it was revealed was the design. They thought it looked really goofy. I kind of like it. I've always liked it. Maybe that'll change when I get my hands on it. Oh, this is a cool, neat little box. All right. And there, and, and there, and hold on a second. And there, all right. <laughs> I'm trying to do a cool reveal. There she is. I mean, I still like it. It is a PlayStation 5 controller, literally sliced in half with a screen in the middle. There's not much to not like about it. What I didn't notice until now though, are these thumbsticks are smaller. They're skinnier and smaller than the thumbsticks on the actual PlayStation controller. So it's a little different. All right, it says hold down the power for a while, it says. I can't see see anything though. Should I take this off? Am I doing something immediately wrong? I don't know. Let me take a little peek behind here as I hold down the power. It's telling me to hold it, right? Or do I literally press here? That's not a button though, right? I'm so confused. Hold the power for a while to turn it on. And there's a picture of a power... <laughs> Oh, back here. That's so confusing. I thought I was supposed to... I don't know what I'm doing. Instructions unclear. There we go. All right. Thank you. I swear I'm not an idiot. If it's your first time here, things usually go relatively smooth. Who am I lying? No, they don't. What I'm really hoping for here out of this setup experience is that it'll just work. It'll connect to my PlayStation, hopefully on my network, and I'll be able to boot up a game instantly. So this screen is an LCD screen. They did not fork out for the OLED, which is a shame, I'll be honest. But right now it is looking really nice. It does strike me as a little weird though. You know, we all have 4K TVs at this point. Most likely a lot of them are OLED. So if you're trying to convince the player to move away from that, to go portable, you'd think that you'd want to give them an equivalent experience on the go. All right, we are connected and there is a download to update. I should have said this, but my PlayStation is behind me and I have Spider-Man ready. Let's see how long this takes. You know, all this tech these days, it's getting really cool, but I still think the coolest tech I've experienced recently are my Vitra XR glasses. I absolutely love them. I take them everywhere, not just to bed, although it is really great to sit in bed and play my games on a giant 120 inch full HD screen to Starbucks, for example. The fact that I can just whip out the Steam Deck, this is still the craziest thing. They worked with Harman for the audio so they have this reverse sound field technology even when people are close to you they can't hear anything but it's really loud for you there's a little dial inside the glasses so you can adjust it to your eyesight if it's too bright where you're playing games you can just touch this one button and it darkens the glasses for you how about you black it out with this shade cover they have beat-em-ups ones that's so cool we actually designed this together they asked me what colors i wanted it's so cute they're doing their best deal ever on these glasses. $50 off. But that only lasts until Cyber Monday. So these shade covers 
are limited, but they are free. If you go to Vitch's website and order a pair of glasses and use my code in the link below, remember to add them to checkout, but you'll get them for free. Yeah, they're super limited though, so you gotta be quick on these. Thank you, Vitcher, for sponsoring. Let's get back to the video. While it's downloading this update, let me take you through some specs here. If you're looking to pick one up, it's only $199. I say only because a lot of us expected this to be at least $300, and I think $200 is a pretty good deal from Sony. I'm surprised they went that low. That screen is a big 8-inch LCD, a little bigger than the Steam Deck OLED even, 1080p at 60 FPS, and then it has the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers that you would expect, and that's really Really all we have to take a look at here. Again, this thing is just streaming your games. You might be thinking, well, I have so many options to stream games from my PlayStation. In fact, I have one over here. So I bought the official PlayStation, I forget what it's called. This has been available for a while. You connect it to your phone and then you can stream your PlayStation games from your PlayStation the same way that this can. A little cheapy feeling it was $100, but it got the job done. But I didn't like the quality of the streaming, so I never actually used it. What I love about the idea of this portal is that not only should it stream these games perfectly, because if it's not perfect, what are we doing here? But you have the official controller. Unlike here where you have this weird little guy, you have the actual PlayStation controller. So you'll get all of that adaptive feedback on games like God of War portably on the go, which I think is really cool. This update's taking a long time. I'm gonna do the wordle. Oh, I already did it. Been stuck on 97% now for at least a minute. Oh, there we go. It wasn't too bad. It just was a lot of waiting. Okay, I got a QR code. Cool. Let's hope I'm actually signed into the app. Oh, I'm not. Oh, that's my problem. Let me figure that out. Oh, I have to solve a puzzle. Use the arrows to rotate the animal to face in the direction of the hand. Oh, I've never seen that one before. Trust the new device. Yes, I do, baby. You're all set. Is that it? Am I good to go? A QR code and a login? Let's go. Connect to the PlayStation 5. Turn on PlayStation 5 from the PS5 home screen. Go to setting system remote play settings system remote play okay that's already on oh open the portal where are we going connected to playstation 5 mm -hmm. let me in baby connecting to playstation 5 let's go all right, here we go. Okay, so I am etherneted in on my console. I wanted to make sure it wasn't Wi-Fi because I know Wi-Fi streaming is terrible. Okay. That's full volume. It's a bit quiet. Oh, it's going. You can see it here and you can see it over there. My 100% save file. That's right. I got platinum. I'm a Spidey Man guy. Let's boot up this bad boy. We are in a sizable amount of audio lag. Is there another way I can test audio than swinging? Okay, I take back sizable. It's just enough that I notice it, but it's not too bad. I like that I just got up and running immediately. I can definitely tell it's streaming, but it's not bad. I mean, it's going, it's working. There is a, I would say a decent amount of bit crush, which I think I'm using that correctly, where it almost looks really low res, but it's just because it's streaming. Like when you're watching a YouTube video and it hasn't quite finished buffering in all the way, and it's still a little low quality, and it kind of makes you want to hit that little cogwheel on the settings and make sure it's set to 1080p. And then once you do that, you see the high quality kick in, except here it's just not kicking in. I ain't gonna lie, witches. When I sat down to make this video, I was really hoping to slam it out in a day, you know, be one of the first people on YouTube to review the PlayStation portal. Then the more I captured B-roll of this thing and had a bunch of connectivity issues and realized that it wasn't anywhere close to what I wanted it to be, I knew I had to take more time with it. I sat right here at my computer, right next to me, right here, and recorded a bunch of gameplay. Oh my God of War, was it great? I thought this thing was a winner. Absolutely no input lag whatsoever. Crystal clear visuals. I started to think that maybe Spider-Man just wasn't a good test as my first game. I was getting sold on this thing at God of War. So I decided to switch to Final Fantasy 16. It didn't work. It was very bad. Both in cutscenes and gameplay, there was constant lag, and I wouldn't even call this bit crush. I would call this... 
Yeah, what she said. I tried taking it upstairs in my house and it, I couldn't get any kind of stable connection at all. It really only worked the best when I was in my basement next to the PlayStation and the router. Also, the first thing I noticed when I turned it on was the speakers. Remember that? Yeah, the speakers are horrible. They're tinny and they just don't sound very good. And since this thing doesn't have any Bluetooth, that means you're stuck with either the PlayStation earbuds, which aren't out yet, or you can plug in a wired headset, which is what I did. But I gotta tell you, those audio skips and glitches while you're playing as it stutters is the most irritating and frustrating sound to have to deal with while trying a video game. Completely ruined my experience playing anything. I've had the PlayStation Portal now for a couple of days and I decided the best test would be to go to Starbucks and see if I can connect to my PlayStation from there. So, I had my backpack and I realized I got no way of transporting this thing. It didn't come with a carry case. I guess I just have to be really careful with it. So as I expected, on the Starbucks Wi-Fi, I can't even connect because there's like a pass-through page where you have to log in and this can't do that. So I hotspotted to my iPhone. I have a really good connection and the new iPhone 15 Max Pro. So if any phone can do it, it should be this one. And while I can connect, it's super bit crushed, low latency, and I can't really keep it connected for too long. Oh, here we go again. This is my third attempt says bad connection and it's just <laughs> crazy unplayable it probably makes whatever i put on this screen for the thumbnail not clickbait because <laughs> this is this you're looking at that uh oh there it goes yeah i don't think this is doable at all at least not publicly Maybe at your grandma's house, I don't know. I also didn't realize that you can literally only stream games to this thing. If you wanna try streaming Netflix from your PlayStation or any other kind of video or anything other than a video game that you have on your PlayStation, it just straight up won't work. It won't allow you to do that. Limiting what this thing can do even more. I can't help but think about the PlayStation Vita, which was able to play its own games with its own giant expansive library and was also able to remote play to the PlayStation. I'm just kind of wishing this also had games I could play on it. I am very mixed on this because again, when it was working, like with God of War and at times with Final Fantasy, it was amazing. It was my PlayStation 5 portably, I want to say on the go, but you know, in my basement, on the go within 20 feet. And that's something I might be able to recommend, but at its worst, or even at its medium, it was literally unplayable. So if it works 50% of the time, how can I recommend that to anybody? This is also on the best internet that America can provide. I have like a thousand down and a thousand up. Fiber? Yeah. Oh, well, I got fiber. Oh, I have the best, baby. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm whelmed, I would say. It's definitely a thing. It's a way of playing your PlayStation games portably if you don't mind taking some hits to the performance and the visual fidelity. Everything else about it is great. It's literally a controller with a screen in the middle. I think 200 is a good price. And if this is an item that is, is for you then, you, then you will probably like it. I don't think I really have too much more to say. If the video just ends here, I had nothing else to say. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>